Thank you for joining us again at The Artist Tree. You know me, your host, Lonita Cook, but who you may not know is the very special guest we have in the studio today. Well, let me ask you this. Do you have a child who's interested in acting? But soft, what a light through yonder window breaks. It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. How about music? In dreams he came. That voice which calls to me and speaks my name. Playwriting. Enough said. Nancy Marcy is a living legend in the Kansas City community and is one of the most influential educators in the lives of young artists. She's taught in schools and universities throughout the city, as well as art-based centers in our own neighborhoods, including the Coterie Theater at Crown Center. Please join me in welcoming our guest, Nancy Marcy. Thank you for joining us at The Artist Tree. We are here with the enigmatic Nancy Marcy. Thank you so much, Nancy, for joining us. I'm glad you made it. It's my pleasure. Wonderful. So you are an actor, writer, musician, and you have been with the Kansas City Theater community for how long? Since 1987. Would Since that be 25 years? Uh, no. Hey, don't, I don't get know. me in here doing math now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so in the Kansas City Community Theater, what, what have you done? You, like I said, you've been an actor. What else? Well, I also am a teacher. That was my day job, as you know. Mm -hmm. Actors, have, that's my main passion is acting. And you can't do that without a day job. So mm -hmm. one of the reasons I moved here was that I had a valid Kansas teaching certificate. So I taught in the public schools and then eventually was able to just teach theater. So just teach acting. Excellent. So now, are you from Kansas? I am from Kansas, yes. But, but I now live in Missouri. But Okay, are you from <laughs> Kansas City? No. No, no, no. No, way out west. Way out west. Yes. What was that like? Oh, Scott City, Kansas. It was. It's wonderful. Wonderful? Yes. Is it rural? Mm -hmm. rural? Mm -hmm. Very rural. My little town had um, 3,500 people. Wow. Which was is it just a great. culture shock for you to be in the no. big Kansas City? I guess <laughs> <laughs> it was. You know, it was interesting because I lived actually in the same house till I was seventeen, and then when I went to college, I'm suddenly at KU, and there were tall buildings. The biggest thing, though, were the trees and the humidity, mm -hmm. and I felt so claustrophobic. Wow. Because so you it, said you lived oppressive. in the same house till mm -hmm. you were 17? Mm -hmm. Were you a, an only child? Is, no. No? No. I have an older sister and a younger brother. Mm -hmm. And uh, Just the three of just, you? Yep, just uh -huh. the three of us. Isn't that, did you live on a farm? No, no, but we had a farm. My aunt and uncle lived on the original home place. Mm -hmm. And then my grandparents lived across the road in a house that was built uh, for some cousins. And then... Eventually, they shift over there and my aunt and uncle. But they, my aunt and uncle didn't have kids. So we were out at the farm every weekend. And it was only six miles, so I would walk. And so you were working there. on the farm. Yeah. Nice. Well, they let me gather eggs. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> to gather them and not break them. That's real work. Right. <laughs> when you're little, especially. Yeah. So um, I know that family is very important to you. Mm -hmm. You were raised with both your mom and dad. Mm -hmm. Talk a little, a little bit about your family and your upbringing, because I know it's uh, special to you. Oh, yes. Very, very important. We were the kind of family that had um, Sunday dinners, mm. and we actually also had church um, at the farm because my and that's how my mother's parents met was through a church called the Christadelphian Church I don't know if you've ever heard of it I but haven't anyway um, they had met at a revival and so we would have church at the farm I always I grew up thinking grandpa was God because <laughs> he would read the Bible and he'd preach you know he'd usually just read uh, sermons that the church it was an, an English church and mm -hmm. they would send those thing, things to us and uh, my Aunt Dory would either play her um, accordion mm -hmm. or the piano and we'd sing hymns and we had you know they had communion and all of that wow and that was up until I was 
probably middle school age. Yes. So it was, you know, we'd, do, we'd have church, then we'd have the fried chicken dinner. Oh, nice. Yes, and of course, the chicken was killed that morning <laughs> and fried in I mean, lard. That's, that's, that's a completely different lifestyle yeah. to, to raise and slaughter your own meat. Mm -hmm. And what was that like? Well, <laughs> every year we'd have a calf. And uh, I never understood where the calf came from, but mm -hmm. we had this little calf. Well, of course, I loved him. And we'd raise the calf. And unbeknownst to me, that would be the calf that was butchered in the fall. Mm -hmm. And then we ate it all winter. Was it ever like a Charlotte's Web kind of moment for no, you? No, I never knew right. that, that that's what happened. That was your norm. <laughs> so <laughs> I named them, they were named, the, the family, they would name them like T-Bone and Burger and <laughs> Chops. To get you prepared. <laughs> I n still didn't get it, you know. Oh, and I would love those little animals, and by they get big enough, I could ride them, mm -hmm. you know, and I'd go out in the pasture and play with them, so. And, and I know that... Um, like you said, you have your sister and your brother, mm -hmm. and your brother grew up to be quite the chef, right? He um, actually is a very good chef, mm -hmm. especially barbecue rub. Mm. Mm. He does his own barbecue. Oh, does he now? And that's my <laughs> birthday gift from him every year, or it used to be. Mm -hmm. um, and he would uh, do ribs. Do ribs for mm -hmm. you. And, you and said I it shouldn't say barbecue. It's not smoked. But he cooks them on the grill. They out, on the grill. You know, the Weber Is grill. Is it a, because we, like my, my father barbecues also, mm -hmm. but he has a barbecue as well as a smoker. Yeah, we don't have the smoker thing. Right. On. In fact, I got him a smoker once and he just didn't like it. It's not for him. Yeah. And, uh, okay. And so, um, are you still in touch with your sister and your brother? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, very much so. We're very close family. Uh, my sister's five years older than I and my brother, or I'm sorry, three and my brother's five years younger. Mm -hmm. And uh, she just got back to Western Kansas. She'd been out in Arizona with her mm -hmm. um, daughter mm -hmm. and three grandkids. And so uh, one thing that our, our viewers should know is that you're very close with your siblings and your, mm -hmm. your brother um, is living with the illness right now, which is yes. why he's unable to cook for you yes. right now. And so when your sister's in Arizona, you go to Scott City, Kansas mm -hmm. to care for him. And, you know, he doesn't need lots of care, mm -hmm. but he has emphysema. Mm -hmm. And when you go into respiratory arrest or, or there are any problems with oxygen, you lose your common sense, mm. you know. And he, you, if he, if he is having trouble with oxygen, he'll act kind of dopey, and then he'll say, "Oh no, I'm fine, I'm fine." Well, it so takes someone else to notice that. And the first few times I would stay there, I would worry, and I'd go into his room at night, you know, and just look and make sure it was probably like a mother does, right, to see if her baby's still breathing. Uh -huh. But um, I've learned to. Not bug him so much. <laughs> he's still, but just to he's be still there. an adult, and I think that is a fine yeah. balance that we have to um, to strike mm -hmm. when we have an adult living with an illness. Um, how does um, that impact your work and what you do here in Kansas City? Well, um, it, if I didn't have such a supportive family mm -hmm. who understood my passion, um, it could be a problem. But like at Christmas, I was supposed to go home and be there for six weeks mm. and take care of him. And I was cast at the last minute in the Seagull at the mat. And doing checkoff <laughs> is a dream I've had. And I just didn't want to let that go. But I didn't want to make them change their plans to right. go be with their grandkids and stuff. Mm. You know, it was so hard. But they said, absolutely. Absolutely. You do that. It is so. quite a blessing to have a mm -hmm. family who understands you and understands your passions. We're going to go ahead and take our first break. Oh, okay. When we come back, we'll get right back into it, okay? Okay, good. Thank, Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to go ahead and take a break. Stay tuned. Our fugitive has been on the run for 90 minutes. Average foot speed over uneven terrain, barring any injuries, is four miles per hour. What I need from each and every one of you is a full target search of every gas station, residence, warehouse, farmhouse, hen house, outhouse, and dog house in that area. Your fugitive has just cashed in his 401k plan. And all he had to do was roll it over. Learn about rollovers and protecting your financial future and choose to save. 
you can't mess with the big dog. And we're back. We are speaking with Nancy Marcy. Before we went to break, we were just getting mm -hmm. into your work uh, in the Kansas City theater community. Uh, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about your studies and your background in education. Okay. I um, it was actually my high school music teacher mm -hmm. that got me a scholarship to KU. So mm -hmm. that's what brought me to um, this end of the state. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and. Uh, Growing up in my little town, mm -hmm. you could either be a teacher um, or a nurse mm -hmm. or secretary or a wife, a a wife right. and mother. Right. And so I wanted to be just like my high school music teacher, so that's what I did. I came to KU, majored in music ed, mm -hmm. and uh, taught in a little town, Overbrook, Kansas, um, which is outside of Lawrence and Topeka kind mm -hmm, of but mm -hmm. and then um, went away to Colorado or to California late 60s were you pursuing a career in acting when no you mm -hmm. no but while I was there I started singing in a nightclub which was very fun and uh, what and was that like I mean I know oh, you say it's fun but <laughs> oh yeah it was the kind of nightclub where they they wanted the the people the patrons to believe that it was just you know, average Joe that said, mm -hmm. oh, give me the mic, I want to sing. I and, see. You know, that kind and of thing. And then you get up there and you're all yeah, tree you're all and you give it to and whatever. <laughs> so that was fun. And I did work in a professional theater, did a, a kind of a dinner theater thing, but mm -hmm. I still taught in, during the daytime. Were so you I, in school as no, well in California? Okay. No. And uh, I, I guess I guess what I'm asking is what took you to California? What? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, husband number one. Oh, nice. Yeah, because well. he was in the Navy. I and see. that was in Vietnam time, you know, and he was on an aircraft carrier, so he was stationed out of San Diego. So that got me to San Diego, and uh, I was a weekend hippie. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, teaching kindergarten one year and then music, and uh, it, was, it was very fun. But uh, that marriage did not last, and I, you know, when in doubt, go to school, so I went back to KU, and, uh, and you got my master's, master's in music master's. education. Mm -hmm. And then I taught in the Lawrence system for eight years. Wow. And um, then I was ready to, or seven or eight, and I was ready to do something else. And uh, a teacher at KU in the music ed department uh, was going to be on sabbatical. Mm -hmm. And so I took his place. And then the next year, I took somebody else's place. So I taught at KU for two years. Excellent. Now, during this time, were you, because I was uh, fascinated with the Strawberry Square. Is this okay. during the time when you were working there? Yeah, it came right at the end of that time, because then I was trying to decide, do I go back to public school? Once you teach college, you really like it, and you don't want to go back to Well, what is Strawberry Square, school? first and foremost? Sorry. So uh, this high school music teacher that got me into KU, she was working in Nebraska mm -hmm. on this show. And Strawberry Square is a place very much like Sesame Street. Mm -hmm. It's a place where these people live, and it was to teach uh, life skills and music to kindergarten yeah, to first children. Grade. Kids. Fascinating. And so she said, would you like to write? And I said... I'm not a writer, but I did it anyway. You did it anyway. <laughs> and it was so fun. And during the time I was writing it, they were supposed to be starting production, and there was a delay. Mm -hmm. I don't remember why. And the lady who was doing the lead mm -hmm. quit. Mm -hmm. So I auditioned for it, so I got the female lead. So, so you it, are the lead actress <coughs> as well as writing on mm -hmm. the show. And Excellent. then I wrote the study guides, and I would go out all over the state of Nebraska and work with teachers and teach them how to use the television show. Wow. So it but was it ended up being my employment for four years. Beautiful. Yeah. But nineteen eighty three came and that was a that huge was a big year. Mm -hmm. yes. That's the year that uh, that the was funding it. for the show for Strawberry Square ended, and that you were also divorced in that yes, year. Yes, yes. And the year second year. divorce, which was wow. not a good thing. Wow. And. Um, you know, in this lifestyle that we have, it's as a little hard, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was living in Lawrence, 
and commuting to Nebraska mm -hmm. to do this television show, and I would be gone for you know for so it was a mess. And that is that unhappy ending. And then my father died. Mm. He had a massive heart attack, and uh, I and I lost my job. And I just thought I am not going to add moving as a stress to my life. Mm -hmm. So what shall I do? I think I'll go to school, <laughs> you know. And they were, the University of Nebraska at Lincoln was very thrilled mm -hmm. because I, by this time I'm almost 40, and they loved mm -hmm. having an older woman in their MFA program for actors. Excellent. So it was great. I had the opportunity to do so roles. So the, the thing that I'm hearing here is that you used education to outlive this devastating time in your life. Yes, I did. Wonderful. That's excellent. I mean, that's... Yeah. Uh, and the arts. I mean, you know, the, the shows I was able to do and to perform in and the training I got, it was, you know, it gave okay. me a place to go. Well, then <laughs> let's talk a bit about how you came back to Kansas City. And I also am interested with all of the education that you have and experience that you have, writing professionally, acting professionally. Why not New York or L.A. or Chicago where we're supposed to go to make it, you know? Yeah. Well, I, um, I think I was too old to go to New York, but I did go to New York and stay with people and I went to auditions mm -hmm. and stuff. Kind of figured out the lay of the land. And uh, to me, that was the place to go if... <clears throat> if you're young and you can live in a one-bedroom apartment with four other people right. and still pay a thousand dollars a month uh, right you know <laughs> per and I thought no honey you know you're 40 you need a different kind of lifestyle mm -hmm. but I my internship for my MFA was with the Nebraska Theatre Caravan mm -hmm. and it's a professional touring company and we toured the Midwest and Canada and on that uh, bus it was bus and truck tour there were people from all the cities that I was interested in, including New York, but uh, Minneapolis and Seattle and Chicago mm -hmm. and, um, and Kansas St. City. Louis and Kansas City. Right. And so I started finding out about it, you know, all the different places and what they could do. And I ended up coming to Kansas City for probably two reasons. <laughs> One is that I was driving a very old... <laughs> <laughs> Toyota. And I knew it wouldn't live through a Minnesota winter. Mm. And Minneapolis, St. Paul area was my second choice. And I knew that if I were substitute teaching, I'd have to be able to get to all these schools. And I thought, there's no way. So it was just you know, destiny pulling you. <laughs> destiny back pulling to me. And, you know, I ended up making wonderful connections, mm -hmm. substitute teaching in the Kansas City schools, and ended up with a uh, part-time teaching in the drama department at Shawnee Mission North and they have a fabulous program. So, And so, what year was that when you came back to Kansas City? I came in 87. And you've been here ever since? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Building your reputation and your <laughs> network of theater professionals who Absolutely. know and adore you. So how fabulous is your life? Because we know from your background you love the outdoors mm -hmm. and everything. But before we get into that, let's go ahead and take another break and we'll come right back and get okay. into it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you guys. We're going to go ahead and take another break. We'll see you when we get back. Alzheimer's disease, if left unchecked, will strike millions, including baby boomers, their children, and grandchildren in the coming years. As a scientist studying Alzheimer's disease for the American Health Assistance Foundation, I'm well aware that continued research is our only hope for finding a cure. Call 1-800-437-2423 or visit ahaf.org for free publications on Alzheimer's. Learn what you can do to help battle this deadly disease.
Welcome back. This is The Artistry. I'm Lonita Cook, your host, and we are talking with Nancy Marcy. She is actor and writer and theater professional in our great community. Uh, before we went to the break, Nancy, we were talking about uh, you coming back to Kansas City mm -hmm. in uh, 1987. And you have been here ever since, and we're going to get into your fabulous life. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, it, I, it was... Uh, it was wonderful when I came back mm -hmm. because I started working as an actor immediately and I, I said within two years I only had like one week off mm -hmm. and I was working at all kinds of theaters and just having a great time. All of them were paying, not a lot. You know, but Martin Lincoln's City melodrama, and right. um, but I, the, one of the reasons I moved to Kansas City was because they had opened a new theater, the American Heartland Theater. Right. That was the first job I got. Nice. So it and was so, so fun. How did, how did that work? Because nowadays you can be in another city and find something online and apply mm -hmm. that way. What was the process like of being hired for a new oh, theater? Oh, I got back into town um, bef when they had their general auditions. Mm -hmm. And then, then I went on that tour. And no, wait, I didn't either. I don't know why. <laughs> but anyway, somehow I had been through their generals. And... So I got the, that part in 87. and uh, But you weren't just hired as an actor. You actually worked. I was an actor. Just an actor. Yeah. Okay. Then later I started teaching I for see. the American Heartland Theater. See. But um, once, once I went union, which mm. happened in 88 or 89, mm -hmm. they, had, uh, they had to make me union because I had like, 25 points and you, you have to have 50 mm -hmm. to be a which is weeks and when of you work. say going union you mean you are an, an equity actor yes. now uh -huh. mm -hmm. Actors how, does, equity. how does that change your career then well <laughs> here's how it changed <laughs> I started I I mean I was in sheer madness mm -hmm. which was a very long-running show I was in it for a year and a half it was like another graduate degree in comedy and in acting because when you don't have to worry about your lines, you do a show year and a half, you know your lines, you learn what else an actor does mm. to make a character live. And it was wonderful and good friends and, you know, spending my time at Crown Center was not bad either. Uh, but when I left the show, it was time, I didn't work again as an actor for two years. And that's because you can because only I was do union. I could not no longer do the non-union yeah. work. You so have I had to, to find my mm -hmm. niche as a union actor, and it's still, um, you know, I'm, I'm, it's not sour grapes that I don't get some things. But but theaters have a budget, right. and God knows they're very tight right now. And if they can find someone that will be okay in the role. Mm -hmm. But so still that a way that cost you them the union fees. Uh, still a way that you supplement uh, your acting work mm -hmm. is you still teach. You have taught yes. um, in the Shawnee Mission, uh, Shawnee Mission School District. You've been an adjunct professor of acting at Baker University, and you also implemented the program, the education program at the Coterie Theater. Yes, right. Can, talk to yes. us about the Coterie Theater, uh, who they are, how long they've been with us, and then why did you implement that program? Well, um, the Coterie's been here almost 35 years. Wow. It's 33, I think, now. And uh, I knew about it when I first moved to town. Mm -hmm. It was, I thought, consistently some of the best theater in town for the budget and the space, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, a good friend of mine from Nebraska, you know, it's all who you know. Who you know. Right. But Joette Pelster is the executive director, mm -hmm. and we were in grad school together in Nebraska. And um, she was the uh, executive director, and they wanted to start an education program, and she said, why not Nancy Marcy? Why and not? They talked to me, and I said, oh, I couldn't do that. Joette said... Do you know how to interview? <laughs> you don't say, do I know? So I just started it. I started that in 1999. Actually, I started, I think, the fall of 98. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then the summer of 99, we had our first summer classes. And they, I had zero budget, you know, when we And the when budget started. is what now? Well, it, when I left, it was 150000 And you did so that. So I, I said mm -hmm. I took it from zero to 150. But they also have an education outreach, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, the AIDS Project, and there are a lot of other things they do. But it was inventing the wheel and 
now they've got a young Cracker Jack in there, so that's <laughs> good. That's good. That, that takes them into the technology that I couldn't do. Hey. That's a, and, but one thing that you did say about working with young actors, and I want to make sure I get this quote right, you say, you love working with young people who love the art in themselves rather than themselves in the art. What do you mean by that? Well, it's a Stanislavski saying. I mm -hmm. wish I could take credit for it. But the, you could think of it easily by thinking of just the show off. It's like, mm -hmm. look at me, look at me. Oh, I'm right. so wonderful. Um, but n the one who really loves the art in themselves is I want to be the character. Mm -hmm. I just love to do it. I don't care if anybody looks at me. I don't care if anybody pays me. I just want to do it. Right. And, and I've known you for years, <laughs> and I know that's the kind of actor that you are. Yeah. And so that's the kind of and work that you'd inspire in kids. You don't always find it, but there are a lot of kids that all they do is theater, and that all it is is I want you to look at me, right. and I want to be the best, and they're always so... Oh, should I say it this way? Should I? Sure. They aren't in touch with inside. Mm. And I love to find the ones that are willing to take those risks and use, use their guts and their soul wow. when they act. That's wonderful, Nancy. I am so, yeah. we are blessed to have you to be a part. Thank you. Uh, before we go, Thank I do you. want to know if there are any shows or upcoming events that you're in real quick because we're wrapping it up um, oh i wish it were a hundred <laughs> i am i'm getting to do a stage reading of um mornings at seven which nobody does anymore and i'm very excited my acting teacher now richard allen nichols will be in it with me excellent so. and can we follow you on facebook or twitter or do you have a fan page um no no <laughs> i mean <laughs> <laughs> you, I know you just said the technology. Uh, my friends, you know, that are my friends on Facebook, I do that kind of thing. But otherwise. Okay, so Nancy, <laughs> uh, before we go, uh, we know that your brother was a light in your life. Yes. And we love he you here. He is the light he in my is life. He is the light <laughs> in your life. And we know that he cooked for you on your birthdays, but he's not been able to do that. And so we wanted to go ahead and present you with something. <gasps> oh, um, it's not the same. My. As your brother, but my father went ahead and made some ribs for you. Oh, <laughs> and we do my love goodness. you. So oh, thank birthday. you. <laughs> thank you. I may have to freeze some and take them home when I go again in April. <laughs> thank you, guys. Oh, thank, thank you, guys, you. for joining us. Thank you. This has been The Artist Tree. Take care. <laughs>